All right, guys, what's up? So today we are doing probably, arguably, the easiest maintenance item there is for your BMW. Probably any car, but because this is an F80 channel, I'm gonna say BMW, and more specifically, and I'll say an F-Series BMW because I'm not really familiar with any other era, although I imagine they're probably comparable. But nonetheless, for your F-Series BMW, the single easiest maintenance item, cabin air filter change. But before we get into that, Quick rant. Okay, so if you have seen any other of my maintenance videos, I've said this a million times, but I think it bears repeating, and that is, again, I don't really frame these, it's not really like a DIY channel per se, so much as it is a ride along watching someone else probably doing this for the first time and showing you how easy it is, or also, well, really, and also pointing out some things that might be worth noting to anybody else doing this for the first time. Now, I get that for some people, it might not be worth their time to do their own car maintenance. Maybe their time is better spent doing something else and so it's better just for them to take their car to a dealer or a shop and get work done. Nothing wrong with that, totally understand. But for me, and coming from someone who didn't really previously do their own maintenance except for maybe a handful of oil changes, I really kind of thought that doing my own maintenance, especially on a special car like an M3, was gonna be part, like a, would be a better, be worth doing for the overall ownership experience. Now, to be fair, a cabin air filter change is not usually something people take their car in for specifically. It's usually done as part of a broader series of maintenance items, probably at like a regular mileage interval, like 30,000 miles where you're getting other fluids changed or topped off or something like that, and they might change the air filter. But um, unlike, you know, maybe say changing your oil, which we've covered before, which is, you know, it's a little more time consuming. It's a multi-step process. Um, this is the easiest thing that you can do and I think if you you know again the target audience here is somebody who wants to start doing their own maintenance but maybe is a little apprehensive about doing it I think this is a great jumping off point for anyone in that position um, and you know what maybe you change your air filter and get the confidence to you know go ahead and do something a little bit more challenging next time so that is the goal here I hope that comes through and uh, all right well enough of that let's go ahead and get started so all you need for this is a 10 mil socket a t20 torx bit and a new air filter and uh, I usually get my stuff from either fcpo or ecs tuning and I'll leave a link in the description below where you can get yours but uh, all right let's go ahead and get started really really easy just a couple of minutes a little bit of patience we're good to go all right, so here is our filter that you're gonna use. Again, link in the description below, but part number ending in 555 for your F-Series BMW. I, maybe it applies to others, I'm not sure, but FCP Euro and ECS Tuning both have that like fitment section of the page so you can double check what works for your car. But again, I will be linking this one in the description. And like I said, all you need is a 10 mil socket, and a T20 because you're gonna have two nuts for the 10 mil and then two screws for the T20. So first you're gonna find the two 10 mil bolts and loosen them up. All right, so then you're gonna start in this corner here and there are three clips that hold this in place. And you're just gonna gently pull to loosen those clips or to unsnap them as it were. Now be careful because in this corner you have a cigarette lighter or a 12 volt lighter, you know, old school. And it is connected by wire, so don't just yank straight down on it. Just be careful and kind of pull it out of place. And then once you loosen that, this will come down. Now from here, you can disconnect this wire back here. Just pull this little tab out. Very easy to do, pulls right out. And then you can just loosen up your 12 volt plug. That comes right off. And then you can move this piece of plastic out of the way. P.S. Did you know you had a 12 volt plug under here? Now you're gonna take your T20 bit and remove the two T20 screws that are holding the panel in place that is holding the air filter in place. And so once that's out, you just have these little plastic tabs. So you pull this tab out and you can pull this down right over here where this white like connecting wire is. And that helps get this unseated. And there is a tab back here too. Pull that to the front. There you 
go. And then you can just let that dangle and then pull your air filter out. And there you go. All right, now if you haven't seen the inside of an air filter, these things can get kind of nasty. And so if you, particularly if you live in a high pollen area or an area that is dusty, maybe you drive through a lot of areas where they're doing construction and stuff. So it is a good idea to change these things on a regular interval. You should do it about every 15,000 miles, but maybe more if you're again, susceptible to, you know, areas that would clog up your air filter more. But yeah, so some nasty stuff in here. Now, one thing to note on this, so when you're putting the new one in, there it is directional. So this little label here that says airflow and the arrow pointing down, easiest way to think about this is that the arrow points to the curve. And then here is your new air filter, all nice and flat. Again, note, arrow pointing down means it goes into the curve. And there you go, new air filter in. And just snap this back in place. So make sure you hear that snap here and then back here when you push this back on and then put your T20s back in. And with these screws and with the bolts, there's no torques back, just tighten them until they're snug. All right, first panel's back in. So now we take the other panel, angle it like this, where this front bar is in front here. And first things first, reconnect your wires. So plug that 12 volt right back in here. It can only go one way, so you can't mess that up. And then your bottom light gets plugged in back here. Now notice that for your, for your 12 volt, this will tuck back behind this piece here. And so when getting this back in place, you wanna start in this back left corner, kinda of get this part seated underneath here, and then kinda of just feel it around a little bit back and forth so you kind of feels like it's getting into position. Then you'll see the clip on this side line up and then that's when you know you're headed in the right direction. Snap the middle part in. All right, everything's back in place. Now just retighten your 10 mils and you're done. And again, no need to over tighten, just make sure it's snug. All right, congratulations. Your first maintenance item is done. Assuming this is your first one. All right guys, well that is about it. So hope this was able to demonstrate how easy this item is to do a first time maintenance item. I think this is the perfect starting place. Kind of like I said, build up that confidence to go and do the next thing that might be a little bit more challenging. Okay, so one other thing that I wanted to bring to your attention real quick because it has just recently been brought to mind and a shout out to Hot Rod M4 for making a video on this. He commented on the video of mine. I went to go check out his channel, pretty awesome M4 channel. I'll link it in the description below. But apparently FCP Euro has a lifetime replacement guarantee program and it works something like this. So you buy, say, an air filter and you use the air filter and then it comes time to replace the air filter, so you buy another one. Well, what you can do is then take your old used air filter, send it back to FCP Euro and they will refund you what you spent on the filter less the shipping. That's insane. I can't even believe that's a thing. Apparently it is applicable to all replacement parts. So any kind of oils, fluids, brake pads, etc. As long as you send back the original part to them, including the used oil or the spent fluid, they will refund you what you spent on it. You just have to pay for the shipping. Again, I, I don't know how that's a thing. I went to their website and the first question on the frequently asked questions page is, is this real? So clearly I'm not the only one thinking that's insane. But anyway, I just thought I would point that out to you because it seems like a pretty awesome program. All right, guys. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching.